Hi guys and welcome back to my video. What do I even say? Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to look at the novella that Stephanie Smeyer released before Breaking Dawn, probably the short second life of Brie Tanner, that vampire at the end of Eclipse. That's what we're looking at. Short story, I'm taking a break from all those massive, ugh, my photo booth was open and I just saw my big old jaw swinging, <laughs> swinging in the wind. Taking a break from those big old massive videos. This one shouldn't take too long. Um, how would I describe it? Disappointing? No, I didn't, you know, I had no expectations going into it, thus I couldn't be disappointed. And it's not egregious. There's no outrageous, um, well, I don't know. A lot of what she writes is basically thinly veiled Christian propaganda, Mormon, sorry. Let's just, I'll just get on with it. I'll just get on with it. But remember to like, comment, subscribe, resubscribe if you've been unsubscribed, all for the engagement. It's, I know it's annoying that I have to say this, but whatever. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN or Virtual Private Network keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data safe from big companies or even bigger cyber criminals. A VPN also changes your IP address, which means swapping the real location of your device to a different one. This way you can virtually travel to any country around the globe. Want to watch shows that aren't available in your country with a VPN? You can do that. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 95 different countries. On holiday, but really missing EastEnders with a VPN, you can change your location back to your home location so you don't have to miss out on what Phil Mitchell was up to that week. You can also bypass censorship everywhere. Surfshark liberates your internet by unblocking blocked websites and also bypassing geo restrictions. Surfshark also has a feature called Clean Web that blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the net safely, which is especially useful if you're using free public Wi-Fi, which can be a gold mine for them hackers, them hackers known as 4chan. But don't worry, Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. There's no connection or activity logs. Surfshark VPN offers additional products to keep you safe online, such as alert, antivirus, and search. Alert checks for potential data breaches with real-time alerts to help you protect your identity. Antivirus, I think you can work that one out. I don't need to hold your hand. And search helps you hide from search engines. <laughs> oh no, are they behind me? Has Google finally found me? Search means you can browse without a trace and avoid personalized ads. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no reason to not try it. Click the link in my description box and if you use the code Elisa, you'll get 83% off and three months free. By Grabthar's hammer. What a savings. So what are you waiting for? Try out Surfshark VPN today. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Let's go on with this. This was a shorter one, 184 pages, I believe, uh, compared to her normal 550. So this literally took, what, two days? Brilliant, love it. Introduction. No two writers go about things in exactly the same way. This is Stephanie Mayer saying this, not Brie Tanner. But this is true. Some people focus on good characters, plot, and logic. Other people write Twilight. <laughs> this is the way it usually works for me. I try to write a short synopsis of what is happening in some other part of the story, and I end up jotting down dialogue. Is that why all of these books are all talk, no action? I wonder how you will feel about Brie. Ironically, how your vampires feel. Dead inside. So, you know, most of these fans probably know the movies better than you do, you think? Definitely. I'm literally, I'm struggling with character names. <laughs> There's no chapters in this, it's just one long, one chapter. Bree is reading a newspaper about the Seattle death toll. Great, Riley was going to blow a gasket. I would make sure I wasn't within reach when he saw this paper. Let him rip somebody else's arm off. Tonight I was stuck with Kevin and some blonde kid whose name I didn't know. They both belong to Raoul's gang. So it went without saying that they were stupid and dangerous, but right now, mostly stupid. Riley's right-hand man was the word. That didn't make me like him any more than the other morons. She sounds suspiciously like Jacob Black. Boy, everyone is stupid except me. A newborn called Kevin attacks a car like a Hulk. The Hulk, not a Hulk. Anyone been watching She-Hulk? The worst part wasn't the She-Hulk turkin with Megan the Stallion. The worst part was whenever Jamila Jamil shows up. The best part was that Madison girl. 
Anyway, Hulk mad, Kevin bellowed. Hulk smash. Am I meant to be intimidated by this smear? Because I'm not. Some of the newborns eat a woman and Brie gets a craving. Ugh, but my throat burns. I clamp my teeth together to keep from screaming in pain. Like, ugh, oh my god, that's totally annoying. My throat keeps burning around all these humans. She follows someone called Diego. You're Brie, right? Diego asked, one of the newbies. I didn't like that newbie. Whatever. Yeah, I'm Brie, but I didn't come in with the last group. I'm almost three months old. <laughs> As Jacob Blackwood called that to Renesme, prime real estate. Pretty slick for a free monther, he said. Not many would have been able to leave the scene of the accent like that. He said it like a compliment, like he was really impressed. Brie is not like the other vampires because she can leave places. I don't know. Brie and Diego eat a pimp and his two prostitutes. The blood was warm and sweet. It quenched the fire in my throat, calmed the nagging, itching emptiness in my stomach. I sucked and gulped, only vaguely aware of anything else. Can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I think the House of Night does a better job of describing blood drinking and bloodlust than Maya does. In the House of Night, it is granted more sexual, but this blood is their life force, how these vampires survive. And I feel like it should be a bigger deal than this, especially when Edward describes themselves as being addicts to blood. I feel like if Maya just railed a few lines once in a while, she'd have a better idea of what it's like when an addict gets their fix. Would drugs have made Twilight better? Yes. They hide the bodies in a dock underneath a boulder. Diego is more normal than the other newborns because he's almost a year old, so he's better adjusted. Stid. Also, for all of Smeyer's talk via Edward about how newborns are really animalistic, Bree just sounds like a normal person. If you if you ignore the bloodlust and murder, just put that in a little box to the side, she sounds like a completely normal person. They clear up the prior newborn's mess. Diego grinned. He took a lighter out of a Ziploc from his pocket and started igniting the clothes of the victims. I grabbed my own lighter. Riley reissued these when we went hunting. Kevin should have used his and got to work on the upholstery. The bodies dried out and laced with flammable vem them blazed up quickly. <laughs> Blaze it. Is this a new detail that their venom is flammable? In the first one, when they burned James, did they all just spit on him until he caught a lie? It's a lot of stuff in the Twilight world that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why are they still going to high school? <laughs> like up until last year, doesn't, they're a hundred years old. Before I went into this, I read reviews on Reddit of what other people thought just to see if it was actually worth doing. And people were being so over complimentary about granted it was on the Twilight subreddit. People were saying how Maya's writing has matured and grown up and this is the direction to... I think people need their eyes checking. You will need your eyes, test him. I frowned. Riley's house was the last place I wanted to spend the rest of my night. I didn't want to see Raoul's stupid face or listen to the constant shrieking and fighting. I didn't want to have to grip my teeth and hide out behind freaky threads so that people would leave me alone. And I was out of books. It was mentioned earlier as well that the newborns play consoles, like mm, PS5s or Xbox Ones, who knows? But that alongside Brie reading, yeah, sound like proper animals, mate. And of course, Bria's a reader. I wonder what she's been reading. Jane Austen. They break into a mall to shop and gossip. There's a vampire called Freaky Fred who can do things. I mean, and that's good. Something she's looking for. Vampires with skills. How do you do, fellow kids? He pulled the Z sound out so I could hear how he was spelling it in his head. Cheers for explaining that, Smeyer. I would have never have grasped it otherwise. Fred's special power is that he can repulse other people. That's not a power. I'd do that shit for free. What skill does Raoul have? Stupid stupidity? No, super stupidity. <laughs> Mine would have been better, stupid stupidity. What, what a zinger. They gossip about their purpose in this life and go home. We made one more quick stop on our way, hit the empty target next door for big Ziplocs and two backpacks. I double bagged all my books. Water damaged pages annoyed me. Does it? I personally love my books when they're all wet and the ink runs illegible actually. It's more challenging then. They keep calling the C the sound. This is a thing, I looked it up. Whatever. The newborns all live on an island. The sun was rising fast. The black pine trees were showing hints of evergreen. Soon the paler tips would stand out against the dark and at about that point I would be dead. Or really dead. Or whatever. This second thirsty superhero life would go up in a very sudden burst of flames and I could only imagine that the burst would be very, very painful. They think that they die by sunlight. Home destroyed, they, oh yeah, the, the, the house is just destroyed, but they come back and the house is destroyed for some reason, whatever. 
they burrow into an underground cave and an underwater cave. All caves are underground, or are they? Are all caves underground? Someone look it out for me. They go into an underwater cave and chat. I shrugged and then yanked my left t-shirt sleeve up my shoulder so you could see the thin ragged line that circled my arm. Got this ripped off once, I admitted. Got it back before Jen could toast it. Riley showed me how to put it back on. I said here, how do they reattach limbs? I want to know, Maya. You find out later on. Shh, not really that interesting. Bree was a runaway teen before being turned. It's very vague. It's just tragic backstory. And then, oh, her life was tragic. And then she was found by the vampire and then she was turned into the vampire. But it's, it's too... <sighs> It's just very vague, okay. It's too vague to emotionally connect to. Diego's brother was killed by a gang, so he killed the gang leader and he got rescued by Riley. I still remembered how Riley looked that night, though the image was all blurry because my eyes had sucked back then. He was the hottest boy I'd ever seen, tall and blonde and perfect, every feature. I knew his eyes must be just as beautiful behind the dark sunglasses he never took off. I'm really struggling, just because I woke up early. Can't talk properly, really struggling. And his voice was so gentle, so kind. I figured I knew what he would want in exchange for the meal and I would have given it to him. Not because he was so pretty to look at, but because I hadn't eaten anything but trash for two weeks. It turned out he wanted something else though. We laughed together again. Weird. Brie and Diego are getting along famously. I've worked something out, so bear with. So far, Brie and Diego have been talking to each other like normal humans. Brie sounds pretty normal despite the vampirism. Saying things like this, we laughed together again and it was weird because she's just been by herself for three months because the other newborns, not fledglings, the other newborns are in these these gangs, but she just doesn't feel like she belongs. But because she can barely remember her human life, it feels like this is how her, like her life has always been lonely. That's how it feels, right? So it's weird to laugh with someone because she's not done that in three months. However, we can't appreciate how weird this really is because we haven't been shown what her life was like living with crazy newborns being chaotic. We've completely skipped over those bits. It's a smear, but like this is, it's a very, this is very shallow and everything's very vague, right? So we have no frame of reference for newborns being mental other than Brie saying so a few times. I can't appreciate that this conversation is weird. I could use my imagination, sure, but within the text itself, there's nothing weird going on for us, the reader. Thank you for coming to my tech talk. I don't think I've laughed with anybody since I met Riley, he said, echoing my thoughts. This is nice. You're nice. Not like the others. Literally not like the other vamps. So what do we do? I asked, using the plural automatically, like we were already a team. I see she's already developed the Bella Swan codependency trait. It was dark grey now and getting infinitesimally lighter with each second. And also Bella Swan's vocabulary. Riley has been telling them, the newborns, that sunlight kills them, but these two are suspicious of this, so Diego tries to stake himself and fails. Don't get all gooey on me now. What? You don't want to be, he widened his eyes and his voice went up an octave. BFFs? He laughed at the goofy expression. I rolled my eyes, not totally sure if he was making fun of the expression or of me. Come on, Brie, be my bestest bud forever, please. Still teasing, but his wide smile was natural and hopeful. He held out his hand. Oh my God, Bree, don't. He's just gonna Jacob Black you. Why did I even say that? Who knows? This time I went for a real high five, not realizing until he caught my hand and held it that he'd intended anything else. Oh yeah, that's why I wrote that, I told ya. Diego decides to break the cave roof to test the sunlight doesn't actually burn them theory. They both realize that the sun makes them fabulous. <laughs> if you type Edward Cullen glitter into Google images, you'll find the ninth circle of hell. Diego laughed. I can see where the stories come from. Imagine if you saw this when you were human. Wouldn't you think that that guy over there just burst into flames? Yeah, nice try, Smeyer, but sparkly people wouldn't make me think of vampires. Diego grinned at me, his face beautiful with light, and suddenly, with a deep lurch in my stomach, I realized that the whole BFF thing was way off the mark. For me, anyway, it was just that fast. Oh, great. She's spoken to a boy for a bit, and now she's in love. Classic Maya. Who else but Smeyer? I was reading someone's review of this this morning and they'll be in like, you know, in Maya's universe, vampires, they mate for life. So that's her soulmate now. It doesn't matter that they were talking for all of five minutes. It bloody does. It bloody, do you don't really, like she doesn't get to know this person very well. There's more, there's no depth in a soulmate. Maya just believes in like love at first sight and stuff. And I think that is just so, so like shallow. <laughs> Shut up. They tried to track down their newborn gang. It was such a strange day. Instead of sitting miserably in the darkness trying to tune out the mayhem and swallow my disgust at my hiding place, I was playing ninja with my new best friend or maybe something more. 
it's not a Maya book without a woman getting unreasonably attached to a bloke within 24 hours. They find the scent of the vamps. You think Riley's a bad dude, don't you? He asked quietly after a minute. As he spoke, he took my hand. <sighs> he moves quick. Chill out, mate. We've got all of eternity. Well, maybe not. They find their group and Diego kisses Brie quickly and only 55 pages in, it took, what, a billion pages for Edward to do that? Raul, the newborn, Threatens to kill Diego and Brie for a laugh, but Fred uses the power of repulsion to save the day. I'm not even kidding. And then I felt something else, something totally unexpected. A wave of revulsion so overpowering that I couldn't hold my crouch. I crumbled to the floor, gasping with horror. How it feels to read Twilight. This city is a labyrinth designed to mock me. Fred apologizes to Brie quietly, I guess because she's special, so the, the odd kid is paying attention to her. And Riley makes it back. Nothing happens. Then at night, Brie hides in a tree until Diego comes. Maybe. Or maybe he was just in a big hurry to see her. You know, we might not want to surprise him if she's nearby. We both winced. Every single Maya character must we wince at least 500 times in their life. They track Riley down and Brie keeps her distance. They come to a gingerbread house. I hope a witch eats them. It, this literally described as a gingerbread house. Kissing didn't sound the same with vampires as it did with humans. No soft, fleshy, liquid-filled cells to squish against each other. Just stone lips, no give. I had heard one kiss between vampires before. Diego's touched on my lips last night, but I never would have made the connection. It was so far from what I expected to find here. So vampire kissing sounds like rocks grinding, like a pestle, a marble pestle and mortar. They can hear Riley and Victoria smooching, which isn't very Mormon of them. Then again, they do end up dying for their sins. They can overhear them talk. Riley thinks some of the newborns are being killed by the sun. Maybe. They see four of the Volturi arrive to speak to Victoria, so they eavesdrop. The Volturi know Victoria wants to destroy the Cullens, so they give her five days to do it before they have to destroy the newborns. And if I have made my attack, our creator are shaken? We'll see. The cloaked girl answered in a brighter tone than she'd used yet. I suppose that all depends on how successful you are. Work hard to please us. The last command was given in a flat, hard pitch that made me feel a strange chill in the center of my body. The Volturi are clearly threatened by the Cullens. They have a face off at the end of Breaking Dawn and literally nothing happens. So I assume in a hundred years time, they will try to destroy the Cullens again. The Cullens should have just wipes them out with the werewolves to save themselves the future trouble. Bree goes back to the newborns. Fred allows Bree to look at him properly for the first time. And of course he's more beautiful than most vamps and he seems to like her. Bree ruminates on what she's discovered. The lie of the sunlight killing them forces them to stay indoors and not hunt all day and thus not cause more death and suspicion. Very clever smear, very good. Brie realizes she doesn't need to stay with the vampires and she could just leave at any time. But would Diego have agreed? I was abruptly not so sure of myself. Was Diego more loyal to Riley after all? Would he have felt it was his responsibility to stand by Riley? He'd really only known me for a day. Was he closer to Riley than he was to me? I mean, yeah, probably. He's known you for less than a day. <laughs> It is interesting that the nearly constant thirst makes it very hard for Brie to concentrate, thus making newborns easier to control. I don't think Bella had this issue though, but then again, she was the most specialist newborn to ever be born again. Riley returns without Diego. I really didn't explain much, did I? <laughs> Diego stayed so he could show Riley that the sunlight doesn't burn them, it just makes them sparkle, but Riley returns without Diego. Oh yeah. One of the vampires died when Brie got back and was just a pile of ashes on the floor. I ignored talking about it because I didn't think it would be that important, but Riley is furious. Riley rips off Kevin's hand and arm and throws the pieces at Kevin. He tears off the ear and hair off of some girl. I wasn't sure if Riley was aware of the threat or if his rant came to an end naturally. He took a deep breath. He tossed Sarah her ear and the hair. She recoiled away from him, licking the torn edge of her ear, coating it with venom so that it would reattach. There was no remedy for the hair though. Sarah was going to have to have a bold spot. So not only does venom turn people into vampires, pretty sure they also have the venom in place of blood, blood. And I'm pretty sure it's the venom from Edward's penis that made Renesmee because how would he still have sperm after all of this time? But Venom can also act as super glue to reattach torn off limbs. 
Get out of here, Stephanie Mayer. Venom is not a deus ex machina for your bullshit. Riley tells the clan that another vampire clan wants to steal Seattle from them for all the blood, so they decide to stop killing each other and be a real team. This coven is dangerously talented, Riley went on, his voice dropping to a hushed whisper. They have a mind reader. He examined our faces, looking to see if we got the importance of this revelation. Which is useless, really, considering none of the newborns have a brain. How come the vampire's limbs catch a light when they're meant to be, like, rock? You can melt stone, I'm aware, but it requires advanced technology because it has a really high melting point. And I doubt a lighter is going to do that. Who cares? Do you know who cares? Riley takes Bree to speak alone. I need your help with Fred. Wow, that kid is strong. I couldn't even look at him tonight. Wow, who talks like this? Owen Wilson moment. Wow. 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 Oh, wow. Riley says that he has sent Diego south to watch out for the Cullens. Riley has Bree spy on Fred to try to convince him to use his powers of revulsion against the Cullens. In the end, watching was boring, thirsty work. Riley didn't give his army a break for three days and two nights straight. Wow, time skip alert. The others learn to fight and train whilst Brie plays cards with Fred and this is fascinating, Maya. Of course her protagonist doesn't do anything. Just like Bella, of course she is sidelined to all the action, has to watch everyone else doing stuff. Maybe there's a reason that Maya's protagonists never really do stuff themselves but they're always watching or hearing about other people doing good stuff. Maybe it's because Maya doesn't trust her abilities as a writer to actually have the people do something. Maybe that's why the backstories for all of the Cullens is so much cooler than what we've got in Twilight because Maya knows that she might not be fully capable of writing out those backstories fleshed out. I don't know. That's just a fan theory. They stop training and go to hunt. They eat an entire ferry boat of people. They go home and Riley warns them about the Cullens. They have yellow eyes. They don't, they do have yellow eyes. I don't know why I quotation that. They have yellow eyes due to old age and a pet human. Riley is the one who scouted Bella's house and took her clothes. He hands the clothes around so they can recognize her scent. One by one, each vampire sniffed the bag. <laughs> Sounds awful out of context. And everyone reacted with wide eyes, but little else. Yeah, I bet. Shoving those gear up their noses. It looked like the red fabric was a shirt. I stuck my nose in the opening, keeping my eyes on the vampires near me just in case and inhaled. Ah, I understood the expressions now and felt a similar one on my face because the human who had worn this shirt had seriously sweet blood. When Riley said dessert, he was right. On the other hand, I was less thirsty than I'd ever been. So while my eyes widened in appreciation, I didn't feel enough pain in my throat to make me grimace. It would be awesome to taste this blood, but in, that, but in that exact moment, it didn't hurt me that I couldn't. We all know that Bella has just the most specialist blood in the world. There are so many things you have yet to learn about being a vampire, Riley said. Some of them make more sense than others. This is one of the things that won't sound right at first, but I've experienced it myself and I'll show you. He deliberated for a long second. Four times a year, the sun shines at a certain indirect angle. During that one day, four times a year, it is safe for us to be outside in the daylight. Imagine being dumb enough to fall for that kind of lie. Riley shows them that the sun just makes them sparkly. So far, things are just happening around Bree, yet another passive narrator. They move out to head towards the Cullens. Fred hangs back and finally speaks. Riley won't be able to think of me for at least 20 minutes or so. Fred told me, his voice casual and familiar, like we'd had a million conversations in the past. I've been gauging the time. Even a good distance away, he'll feel sick if he tries to remember me. Really? That's cool. Fred smiled. I've been practicing, keeping track of the effects. I can make myself totally invisible now. No one can look at me if I don't want them to. That is a cool talent, much better than Alice's constant headaches of ever-changing visions or Aro's I read every thought that you've ever had nonsense. Fred is going to ditch the newborns and wants Bree to go with him. I hesitated for a second. The idea of safety was hard to resist in that exact moment. I've got to go get Diego, I said, shaking my head. What a dumbass. I don't care about her now. She was friends with Diego for all of a day. She spent more companionable, silent time with Fred. Daft mayors, daft vampires fall in love and can't, or seemingly can't ever fall out of love. It's just stupid. Fred says, bring Diego and meet me in Vancouver. Bye. And Brie runs after the others. They catch Bella's scent and go nuts. Riley leaves to find Victoria. All the vampires are fighting and Brie can't find Diego. <sighs> Maya, all of the women in your books obsess over one bloke to their own detriment. She knew him for a day. Just run away. Brie can't catch Diego's scent anywhere and she thinks that Diego was dead the whole time. And Carlisle tackles her but spares her, obviously, Saint Carlisle. We love to see him. The battle was over in five minutes. It felt a lot longer in Eclipse. And you didn't even get to see the battle in Eclipse. You just heard Edward's radio baseball 
running commentary. Esme and Jasper joined them. Carlisle, I, he hesitated, then continued. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. We can't have any of these new ones associated with us when the Volturi come. Do you realize the danger that will put us in? I didn't understand exactly what he was saying, but I got enough. He wanted to kill me. Jasper, she's only a child, the woman protested. We can't just murder her in cold blood. Why is Jasper so based? It was strange to hear her speak like we were both people, like murder was a bad thing, an avoidable thing. It's our family on the line here, Esme. We can't afford to have them think we broke this rule. The woman, Esme, walked between me and the one who wanted to kill me. Incomprehensibly, she turned her back to me. No, I won't stand for it. Carlisle shot me an anxious glance. I could see that he cared a lot for this woman. I'd have looked the same way at anyone behind Diego's back. I tried to appear as docile as I felt. Esme is foolish. She is naive to the point of foolishness. It's luckily, lucky for her that she's a vampire made of diamonds. Just lucky for her. And also shut up, Brie. You, you knew Diego for a day. Carlisle and Esme have been together for almost a hundred years. You, it's not, see this whole, like the bull. <sighs> The issue I have with Maya's like love at first sight, the universe is moving me in ways I don't understand, is it's just shallow. Brie and Diego hanging out for a day and then being in love is in no way equivalent to an actual real relationship with someone. It's just not. So I just don't care about that. I don't care. Jasper makes Brie close her eyes and follow him, maybe so she doesn't see the werewolves, I don't know. The anger didn't make me stupid, though, because I was too sad, miserable to my core. Diego was always in my mind, and I couldn't help thinking about how he must have died. I was sure there was no way he would have voluntarily told Riley our secrets, secrets that had given me reason to trust Riley just enough until it was too late. In my head, I saw Riley's face again, that cold, smooth expression that had formed as he'd threatened to punish any of us who wouldn't behave. I heard again his macabre and oddly detailed description. When I take you to her and hold you as she tears off your legs and then slowly, slowly burns off your fingers, eye, ears, lips and tongue and every other superfluous appendage one by one. I realise now that I've been hearing the description of Diego's death. Okay, rip. That night, I'd been sure that something had changed in Riley. Killing Diego was what had changed Riley, had hardened him. I believed only one thing that Riley had ever told me. He had valued Diego more than the rest of us, had even been fond of him, and yet he'd watched our creator hurt him. No doubt he'd helped her, killed Diego with her. Yeah, big if true. Sorry, if this is true, we barely know enough about Diego to give a shit beyond vague, tragic backstory. She spent a day snoo snore yawn, whatever. She hears Jacob yowling in pain. Even an indirect mention of Jacob Black is too much for me. For a second, I saw Fred's face behind my eyelids. He said he would wait for one day. I wondered if he would keep his word. I wished I could tell him the truth about the yellow eyes and how much more there seemed to be that we didn't know. This whole world that we really knew nothing about. It would be interesting to explore that world, particularly with someone who could make me invisible and safe. <laughs> Too bad, sucker. It's tragic in of itself because Brie was essentially indoctrinated into a cult and is going to die and it's not her fault, but her backstory is vague, her personality is non-existent slash vaguer. So again, it's, it's hard to care. I have no emotional connection to this character. We are now at the scene near the end of Eclipse with Bella waking in the clearing and the Volturi about to arrive. There were three more vampires behind the big one. I couldn't see exactly what they were doing with him in the way. Carlisle was kneeling on the ground and next to him was a male vampire who had dark red hair. Sorry, Maya. I didn't realise that Edward was ginger. It was her, the human I'd been hunting just a few minutes ago. The scent my whole body had been focused toward. The sweet, wet scent of the most delicious blood I've ever tracked. My mouth and throat felt like they were on fire, whatever. The redhead spoke to her in a low voice. Sorry, since when has Edward Cullen been a redhead? I thought he had bronze hair and I thought bronze was basically just brown. Yeah, that's what bronze hair looks like. But um, he, no, he's, he's got dark red hair, but dark red hair? If you Google it, dark red hair, not just dark red, man. Look, so, what, since, since when? Sorry, I've read these books like at least several times now and I've never heard any description of, am I just wrong? Am I crazy? Does it, what? I'm confused. The vampire named Alice shot a glare at Jasper. Overprotective fool, she said in a clear soprano voice. The way every character in Maya's universe just knows what a soprano voice is. I don't know what a soprano, but these people, all, all of them do. They they know the exact terminology to describe a person's voice, all of them, okay. Maya finds it fascinating to give us exact scenes that we've read before, but from a different perspective. Like Midnight Sun or Jacob Black doing stuff. Bree's perspective adds nothing new 
to this apart from one detail near the end. The Volturi arrive. This Victoria, Jane asked slowly, was she in addition to the 18 here? Yes, the redhead confirmed. She had only one, one other with her. He was not as young as this one, but no older than a year. Riley, my fierce pleasure intensified. If, okay, when I die today, at least I didn't ha leave that loose thread. Diego had been avenged. I almost smiled. Maya, I'm sorry, but we spent a day with him. How do you expect me to give a damn about it? How do you expect me to? Come on. It seemed like Jane was pleased with my story. In a flash of insight, I understood that she was relieved Riley hadn't told me or the others about her little visit to our creator, Victoria. This was the story she wanted the yellow eyes to know. The story that it didn't implicate Jane or the dark plagued Volturi. Well, I could play along. Hopefully the mind reader was already in the know. I couldn't physically take revenge on this monster, but I could tell the yellow eyes everything with my thoughts, I hoped. This is smart. This is an exceedingly rare Twilight character W. Which reminds me, Jane went on, her eyes locking on the human girl again, her smile widening. Caius will be so interested to hear that you're still human, Bella. Perhaps he'll decide to visit. Still human. So they were going to change the girl. I wonder what they were waiting for. All we get from Bree's perspective when she meets Bella or sees Bella is, oh look, there's a human. Why is she a human? Why is she with the vampires? Why does it look normal for her to be a vampire? Why won't they eat her? Are they going to change her? Why haven't they changed her? What's going to... And we already know all of the answers to the questions she's Ask, it's not interesting. This would be it then. I still didn't feel afraid. My only regret was that I couldn't tell Fred more about all of this. He was going almost totally blind into this world full of dangerous politics and dirty cops and secret covens. But Fred was smart and careful and talented. What could they do to him if they couldn't even see him? Maybe the yellow eyes would meet Fred someday. Be nice to him, please, I thought at the mind reader. Fred's spin-off when? Please, Maya. I need the content. Don't watch, the red-headed mind reader whispered. I closed my eyes. Red-headed when? The end. The positive reviews of this book were being very gracious. I don't think it was that dark. Oh, a vampire died, a whole boat of people. Yeah, but the descriptions are so vague. It's not like a it's not like a Stephen King novel where I don't know where it's really graphic. It's it's vaguely dark, vaguely dark concepts, you know. I don't know how I'm meant to care about anything, especially Diego. Firstly, a rogue death for him to just die off camera randomly for a twist. I get it, but again for me, lacked emotional impact because their relationship was incredibly superficial. They spent less than a day together. So I'm not, ha come on, Maya. I think if you buy into the idea of there's a, there's a one true love and a love at first sight, like if you buy into that idea, then this would be a lot sadder for you, but I don't. So as always, I am very grateful. This is the acknowledgements to all the people who made this book possible. My boys, Gabe, Seth, and Eli. She gave her kids Old Testament names. Honestly, I love that for her. What a religious icon, love her. One of my besties is religious. She's a Christian. I used to go with her to like Christian youth groups and stuff. Not because I wasn't religious. I wasn't brought up religious, but I've always just had a uh, natural curiosity about other people and what they get up to, you know. Gets me in trouble sometimes, but this is more of a good thing. And we were hanging out the other night and I told her about, what the fuck happened? I thought my jaw was going to like, un what? <laughs> That's scary. I thought my jaw was going to get locked then. Anyway, we were hanging out and she doesn't, she hasn't seen the thing about what old biblical angels actually really look like according to the Old Testament. Oh God. <laughs> this has happened before it's, it's from talking too much i swear so i was showing her pictures of what and this is why the old the old testament biblical angels would always be like be not afraid because they were just made of eyes and wings and like hundreds of heads and stuff anyway smith and t -t 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 saving the best for last my readers you're the best audience anyone could have thank you you're welcome i'm single-handedly giving twilight the true renaissance that it deserves Seriously, the positive reviews of this book on Reddit are so over the top. I'm, I understand media can affect people differently and that is fine. I get that good for you if it if it did. But for me, it just makes me feel like, ugh, okay, shallow, don't care. Like what, there was no world building really. Like nothing that we didn't really know. People said things like, oh, my heart broke, why? Who cares? You already knew that she was going to die anyway. The world building is good. And that could have been really effective to make it really tragic because you already know that she's going to die if you've read Eclipse. But the world building is great. No, it's what world building? They were in a house and they ate a boat full of great. Oh, it's so dark. Probably because they kept going out at nighttime, weren't allowed out in the day. Oh, she doesn't want to live after Diego dies. Vampires mate for life. She was friends with him for like a day. And the idea of this is tragic, I'll admit, but the execution falls completely flat. And I just realized that she died a virgin. 
Stephanie Mayer, I've had, I've had enough. And that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bit shorter, love that. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. I make new videos whenever I feel like. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok and my other two channels. Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.